Okay, so here we have a an example. So I'm going to go through um, how we're going to go through or make up this drawing. And um, it's on a 2D scale. So it's not on a 3D scale. We're just going to be drawing it up on a 2D scale. So I hope this uh, will be beneficial. Remember to um, subscribe below um, and also make some comments. Uh, Tell me what you think of the, the lessons, if there's something else that you would like me to do or show you on the AutoCAD system. Um, so, yeah, as to improve uh, and uh, aid you in anything that you need done. Alright, so as the example, it's a very simplistic example for now. Um, what I would like to do is first split. So I'll go into the view. I'm going to split my viewport. It's too vertical. The reason why I want to do that is this is my method of drawing if um, if I've got something on my uh, um, on my laptop that I'm needing to draw up and if I don't have dual screen I will utilize this um, as in my viewports configuration. I'm going to split my viewport so I can work in the one viewport, obviously the big, bigger viewport and in the smaller viewport are then placed in the drawing that I'm needing to draw up. Okay, this is also very helpful when um, I'm looking at various uh, components on the one side and I'm wanting to uh, use areas of that, so copying and pasting from the one side over onto the other side. Um, yeah, so you would understand if you've done drawing before that there's uh, monotony in some of the drawings, so there's there's quite a, uh, a conglomeration of um, the various drawings on or compacted into one drawing. Say, for instance, for example, a civil's drawing might have um, different types of roads, electrics, and um, uh, components like uh, buildings on the drawing itself, and I would then be able to zoom in on the one area. Yeah, uh, copy and paste certain things onto another area so you can zoom in on the one area on the one side so if I look at this side I can zoom in over here I can then copy and paste certain elements on this onto the other side okay so that will then aid you it'll help you in in doing that uh, um, on a practical basis in a civil's drawing okay so how we're going to begin is I'm going to begin back in my home tab and I'm going to start off with a rectangle, straightforward rectangle. Remember if you look at the bottom it says dimension. Okay, so it says the length, I want the length, so it's 140, enter, and my uh, width, 100, enter. Okay, and I'm going to click over there. Now another thing that um, I would need to do before I actually start all this process I need to look at my layers I have no layers there so I'm going to select my layer properties I want to then uh, create some of the layers that I'm needing so I'm going to create my first layer my first layer is going to be my main layer so I'm going to just put the main 0 0.5 millimeter now it's imperative that you understand. Sometimes they don't, uh, AutoCAD doesn't allow you to place in points. So we're going to check that out as well. And it's just for thickness. Okay, so it's 0 0.5 thick. Let's click outside, see if it's, it's going to accept. It accepts it. Okay. Now I'm going to make this layer a green layer for my main layer. Okay, it's going to be a continuous layer. And my default line weight, I'm going to set it at 0 0.5. Now, the funny thing is, I sometimes can, uh, in my plot style, I can also take my uh, uh, green layer, or whatever is in green, and plot it in the plot style. And what a plot style is, is basically the, the, um, the line weights and the configuration which um, I'm wanting to print. Okay, so I'll explain a little bit more on the plot style a little later when we are uh, doing the plotting. But for now, line weight thicknesses, I like to plot my line weight thicknesses. So 
on the one hand you can plot line weight thicknesses or you can have a plot style which plots different line thicknesses for the various colors that I've placed in. Okay, I'm going to create a few more layers and this layer is going to be my center layer. It's a center line so and the center line is going to be 0 0.25 millimeter thick THK and I'm going to make this uh, red color okay because I like the different um, different colors I can utilize and recognize immediately what types of colors okay and we're going to change the line type over to a um, over to a center line so over here in this select line type we need to load the layer and you can scroll down scroll down then to select whatever type of layer I'm going to select the center I'm going to press OK and you'll see the center layer there you still have to select it there and press OK so you'll see it comes up here as the center layer all right next I'm going to also place in a hidden line okay and that's also going to be 0 0.25 millimeters thick all right I'm going to make this color let's make the color a little bit different the hidden detail let's make it blue cyan color okay and now let's look at a dashed line okay that's fine and 0 0.25 is also fine right now I'm wanting to just extend that slightly so that you can see the various names that I have I'm going to create another layer called my hatch lines okay and we're going to say 0 0.18 millimeter thick the color I'm going to make it magenta in color so we've got green red cyan and magenta if there is anything else that I will need maybe a construction layer I think the construction layer I'm going to just leave it as zero because uh, I don't want it um, I don't want to actually print that so I'm going to place a little I do not want it printed so these are my main ones that I want print to be printed and another layer that I would like to draw up is dimension layer so a dim line and that is also 0 0.25 millimeters thick and that one uh, we can make it white that's fine text layer is also advisable so we can place in a text layer text line and let's make that also 0 0.25 millimeter thick it varies so I might want it just thin enough um, so I can see it and whatnot if I make it too thick it might become or come out blotchy so I you know it's uh, it depends also on the size or height of my text if I'm making it 0 0.5 I would have 0 0.5 as a 5 mil uh, text height okay and let's make this layer yellow and it's a continuous line as well all right so we've got a hidden line which is a dashed line let's go through this we've got a continuous line continuous line center line a dashed line and the hatch line is not supposed to be dashed okay so I can bring that back to a continuous line all right now it's showing me that the text layer and the dim line is not going to be plotted I want them plotted so I'm going to make sure that they are plotted okay 0 0.25 thick so let's change it over to 0 0.25 and that one okay so we've got our layers that we are needing I'm going to close this notice on the drawing uh, um, where tab where it says they're drawing one it's got a little uh, star right next to that that star 
is to just remind us that we have not saved this. Okay, so when I click on either my save over here, it's going to take that star away, and it's only until I start to revamp the drawing. Okay, so I've just saved that. Now, you see the star goes away. As soon as I start to work on it, the star comes back there, just to remind me that it's not saved. Okay, well, for me, it's a reminder. Now, I've just done this rectangle. Let's come back into the uh, various things that I'm needing to do. And I'm going to make that a main line. Note, if I put on my line weight, it comes out thicker. I'm going to keep it off for now. I'm going to explode that line. And the reason why I explode the line is because I'm wanting to work with it. I'm wanting to work with it, I'm going to offset that and whatnot. So I'm going to offset that by the 25. Okay, 25, enter. There it is. Then I'm wanting to place in my circles. So the circle number one, I can either use my polar tracking and bring that in and say 83, enter, and it starts the circle off there. Note, it's the zero line weight, sorry, zero layer, and I'm not too happy with the zero layer, so I'm going to bring that back to a main line. This line, it's a 60 diameter. If you notice here on this side, yeah, it says 60 diameter, and over there is 80 diameter. So I'll come down here, click on my diameter, and say 60, enter. What I can do is offset that by 10 mil, because if I offset that by 10 mil, I will get to my 80 mil. Okay, or, and the reason being is because my 10 mil only offsets it 10 mil on this side and 10 mil on that side, so it's, it's going to be a full 80 millimeters if you take the full circle into consideration. Okay, so I'm not going to offset that. I want to draw up my circle. Okay, I set a 40 radius. And both lines I'm selecting and changing over through to a main line. Okay, let's go back to main line over there. There is now a portion here that I've got to draw up. Okay, so I can do either a modification or I can, um, if I'm going to modify it and break the line, I can break the line so I can copy and paste that. I don't want to do that. I want to just draw a straightforward line. From the center over here, okay, to that point there. This line, I'm going to eventually make it into a center line. But what I'm wanting to do now is I'm wanting to take 30 um, and divide that by 2. So I'll say 30, divide that by 2, and it's to be able to offset 15 mil on the one side and 15 mil on the other. Now I can take the line and make it a center line. You can note that the center line, if I zoom in, I can see it's a center line. I'm going to escape that. You can see it's a center line, but when you zoom out, you can't see it's a center line. And that has to do with the line type or the line uh, scale. Okay, the line scale. This line, I'm wanting to copy. So I'll copy from the midpoint and I'm going to take this off uh, perpendicular snap so and I'm going to bring it down there okay I'm also wanting to make sure it is um, like almost like a uh, it's going to indicate the center of the circles itself so I'm going to rotate that from the mid midpoint up note that it is gone gray so the one portion's gone gray. It's to tell me that it's not copied. So I can type C, enter, and that'll then copy it. Or I can go down to the bottom, it tells me copy or reference. I press C, enter, and it allows me to copy. Okay, so there is my center lines. I'm gonna extend it slightly out, but the lines that I'm wanting to extend it out to, I can make it 15 mil over. That line, 
that line, this line. I want you to just take it over my boundary to a certain degree, or you can take it over slightly of uh, slightly over the um, the circles itself. I'm going to take it over to those points. I select these lines. Okay. Now you might develop another method of um, drawing this up at a faster rate. I can do all of them at one time. Um, let's take that one out. There we go. And now I can delete these lines here. Right. So that's the first drawing. The second drawing, you'll see it's a front view. This is my top view, and I'm needing to draw up the front view. Now how I would do that is I would take my construction lines, right click, and say vertical. The vertical lines I can then place directly where I'm needing them to be placed. I'm needing to offset a certain distance. So this line I'm going to offset that distance. I'm going to offset it by roughly 50 millimeters. Okay. That line is going to be where that smaller line is going to be placed in. I want to offset that line by the 100 mil, by the 25 mil, and if, let's come into this drawing here, if we have the dimension here, by the 40 mil. Okay, so let's do that. Offset, let's say 100, enter. down. I'm going to offset again. Now the nice thing is if I come here I can go the distance. I can just click the distance. So I'm left click uh, at the one point at the corner point to the corner point and then it will show me that I can offset that distance. Come back here and I can offset that distance. Note it's 25 more. If I wanted to offset that distance there, or that off offset that distance, I can do the same. Okay, so I'm coming back in here, and I'm going to click on that point there, click on that point, come back in there, and I can offset that distance. I will do the same with that one there, enter. Let's go offset, click inside here, from that point to that point that point to that point. Now let's clean up this drawing. I use my trim, okay. I like to click where I'm wanting to trim first, so those lines, just so that I don't get too confused. Right click, I can take out those lines, take out that line. All right, see that line is supposed to be there can take out that line. Right. Right click, press enter. Next portion where I'm going to be working. Let's just take out those bottom lines here in the meantime. And this line I'm going to make it look like that. That line, that line there and make sure it doesn't go straight down so I'm going to click on that one. Right click, take that line out, okay that line I'm taking out, that line I'm taking out. Slowly but surely it's starting to look more or less like what uh, what we have got on, on the left side. Okay. I need to place in a fillet. So my fillet, 
I'm going to look at a radius of 5 mil. Let's make sure that the trim is on. Okay, so this side here and that side, I'm trimming it so it then takes that, the lines coming directly across. But this side here, I don't want to trim that. So I'm going to click on my radius again. And I'm going to say trim, no trim. This line and that line. Once again, I press right click and I repeat it. And now I can clean it up. There. And there. Okay. Okay. So this line I offset by 15 millimeters and that line I offset by 15 mil. This line, what I like to do is I like to use my chamfer, make sure that the distance is zero and zero. Click on that side and that side just to make sure that the corner is there seems like there's an additional line here so if I delete that note it is showing me that it wasn't the case so I'm going to press ctrl Z to bring back that line now the reason why it did not delete is because it did not uh, turn out correct is because when I go to trim, it is sitting on no trim. So if I, if I click on those two, it's not going to work. I want to bring it back to trim so that I can do that. Okay, so it comes out neater. Next, this line. Once I click on that line and right click, I can then trim the main line that comes down. And then extend to this line here. So note I'm left clicking on that line, I right click, it says fence cross edge undo. Okay so I'm just extending it to that line. This is extremely helpful when it comes to any type of drawing if you are going to be placing in whether it's center lines or whether it's uh, um, indication of cables or whether it's you name it. You can you can use the extend button in this type of manner. I've done many electrical drawings that requires this. All right, note, I'm wanting to change this line over through to a center line. Okay, so I, I like to change it in this type of a fashion where I can change it in that fashion. And I've got to press escape. There's another method of doing this. Okay, I'm just clicking on these lines here. As many lines as I'm wanting to change, I'm going to change it over through to the lines that I'm needing to change it to. So this is hidden detail. Okay. There's another method of doing this, and I can match um, my uh, layer properties. So I can match the layer properties, which I have done that in a previous um, recording. So just you can go back and you can check out the previous recording. Okay, I've completed that. I want to go over to the next one. Note that I haven't changed the line type scale um, as yet. And once I've done the full drawing, I'm going to be changing a lot of things and placing in my dimensions and whatnot. Just to, just to show you that um, how we can get it all done at one time instead of having to waste time going to each individual line and having to do it over and over um, I do it uh, with the lines that I've got so I'll change the line type scale one time all right I can extend lines across so I want to draw up that portion there within a subject like technical drawing um, what we tend to do is have a 45 degree line so we have a 45 degree line that will go up from that side and then project lines across here and down and project lines across to make up that drawing there but 
within AutoCAD, I'm wanting to do this at a faster pace, so it's going to cost me a bit more time if I had to do that. Okay, so I'm going to show you a method in order to get this done in a faster pace or at a faster pace. Okay, so I'm going to offset once again 50 mil so that we can get a spacing like that or what I can do is just click on that to there then I can offset that line directly across to that point there. Right click, press enter. Okay, now remember this distance here is practically that distance but the nice thing is when I click on offset and I can click on that distance I can bring this across. Now you might think but I haven't got the lines going directly up that's not a problem. I'm going to go back to my fillet place in a radius of 20 enter click on this line so the first line that I'm clicking on that one and that one again I'm going to click on this line and that line and you'll see it comes into play all right okay so the lines coming down here I have a tendency to to try and shorten it as much as possible or as quick as possible and sometimes if I've got a lot of detail so say for instance if there is a thread that I'm placing in and I don't want to waste time I'll come directly through to a top view here also just click on that particular line there just to get us ourselves a center line and I'm going to rotate this okay so I'm going to rotate it at a point. Okay, so this is my base point here. Note, it grays out because it's not copied. So I go down and I press copy and then it comes, color comes into it. Okay, and I click. Once I select this, the way in which I'm going to move it from that point there. Why? Because I want to get it through to a mid point okay now if I'm going to be placing in my radius of 15 millimeters I don't want it to extend past that line okay so I must make sure that these lines don't go past 15 mil I could do it just straightforward like that and then select in that fashion and click on my stretch from that point to that point. That is one, one method of doing it and it's a fast method. Or I can offset, take a line from here from the bottom and offset that by 15, trim the lines and then place in my half circle. Okay, now that I've got that half circle in place, I'm going to delete that line. Right. Then, last but not least, this, these two lines I'm going to use as my trim lines. And I'm going to trim that line and that line, as well as this one. Okay. This line I'm going to take out. I'm going to grab this full portion here. It's got my fillet in. It's got the other fillet. Okay, I'm going to grab those lines as well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that from a point to that point. Okay, remember these are circular. Okay, it's not like it's elliptical it is a circle okay so if it's cylindrical in shape or circular in shape you understand that at if I look at it from this perspective or that perspective it's going to be the same okay so on a 2d scale it's going to be the same there right once I've done that I'm wanting to trim this portion here so I can use these two lines as my trim line take that out Okay, 
that's already 15 mil above this line needs to be extended to 15 mil or trimmed to 15 mil so I'm going to take this line I can take it back up but I like to use my tracking to get it to that point there okay all right so it is almost complete what I'm going to do now is press control one just to bring in my properties so I'm control one keep the finger on control and press one it'll bring in my properties tool and what I'm then going to do is I'm going to select the lines that I need to see so I can't visibly see all my um, hidden detail with my center lines so I'm going to change this line type scale let's make it say 10 okay is that visible okay let's go in can I see that is it visible it's a little bit better let's try and make that 15 okay if I'm happy with that then I can press escape and you'll see the drawing almost complete okay so there's the drawing that we can do in a very short span of time okay control one will then take out my properties um, toolbar okay now I'm needing to place in my dimensions so I'll go over to the annotation click on that little uh, um, portion where I can it's got a little arrow and it's going to show me there's a draw and on this side yeah it's dimension style okay and then I'm going to click on it brings in my dimension style okay so you would most probably have it on standard but standard um, it's it's quite different to what it looks over there if um, if you look at standard I go over and say new I'm going to call this um, let's call this five millimeter ISO okay and I'm going to say continue the primary units I'm going to keep as zero so if I look at my primary that's the one on precision if you're wanting to take it over to whatever type of precision on this for now I'm not going to place it on the various precisions my foot okay uh, it looks okay text I'm wanting to place it above so my text I'm wanting to place above I'm wanting to center it and I'm wanting to align with the dimension itself okay make sure on your primary units that the scale factor is one okay my symbols and my arrow sizes my arrow size I'm going to make five okay take note on the arrow size it looks dreadful in my little preview on that side okay let's go over to the text notice the text height is 0 0.18 I'm going to change this height to 5 mil okay and I'm going to now start to look at the text style let's go into the text style so if I click on those three little dots right next to standard it then shows me standard I'm wanting to create a new style and I'm going to call this 5 millimeter ISO click OK um, I might not exactly like Arial okay we can keep it on Arial if although we can also bring it down to ISO I like to take an ISO IV50 I think that ISO CP um, IV50 would be it looks a lot better okay and the height that I'm going to make is 5 mil and to apply that and press close okay so there it is note here it says offset from the dimension line I'm going to place in there a 2 mil 
Look how different that looks. Okay, go back to your symbols and your arrows. Everything there looks fine. Go back to lines. Extend beyond the, the dimension line. And when I play with this setting, if I say that's 2 mil and offset from the origin, note there's a little line that extends past the actual arrow. You might want to make that slightly bigger. Okay, and offset from origin. I'm going to make 4 mil. Okay, so you can see it offsets from the actual uh, drawing itself. It just gives you that uh, clearance so that you can distinct, dis distinguish between a dimensional line and the drawing itself. Sometimes, uh, in what I have noted in many of the drawings, is that uh, some of the people would actually place the dimension line and it looks like it's part of the drawing and it does get a little bit confusing. So my preference is to place an, an offset from the origin. Click OK. All right. And if you are happy with that, we can say set current. Close that. All right. Note, now I'm going to start to place in my dimension. Okay, and I want you to take note, it is still in my main layer. Okay, and what I'm doing now is I'm giving it a space of 25 mil. All right, so I can neaten that. I'm going to take that layer and I'm going to bring it to my dimension layer. My dimension layer comes out white. Right. Okay, let's bring that over to dimension fully. Okay, take note. These lines come out thicker and this line comes out thinner. Okay, now I can place in the dimensions that I'm wanting. So on and so forth. Okay. Right, I'm setting it, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the end point and I'm allowing it to give me a dashed green line and when it does that I can then place in a distance that I'm wanting it to be. So I'm going to place it at 25 more. Okay. Once you are happy with the drawing, once you are happy with everything that you've done, um, then you can place this into a template and then print it. In this lesson it is just to show you exactly how we can do a 2D drawing, how we can draw up a 2D drawing in a short span of time utilizing our modify toolbar and our draw toolbar um, as well as our annotation okay so that was just to give you just a brief sample or a, an example of how you can draw this up in a short span of time okay if i look at this here i'm wanting to just show you one more thing Let's say, for instance, I'm wanting to change my dimensions or I'm wanting to change uh, certain things on the drawings. Um, uh, what we have found very helpful, especially out in industry, is if I select everything, I then right click and I go through to my quick properties. It'll then come up with my quick properties. I then click on that little arrow. It tells me lines, 32, rotated dimension. I'm going to click on the dimension here, it tells me it's the dim style of 1, and I'm going to say 5, okay, ISO, alright, 5mm ISO, and I can also change, um, there's text overrides, there's annotation, associative, you name it, there's different things that I can change over here, alright, 
click back on that arrow I go to the aligned dimensions and I change that also to the 5 click back on the arrow go to the radial change that to the 5 mil ISO go back there change this one to the 5 5 millimeter ISO okay so that's just changing the drawing that I originally started off with okay and you can see the dimensions have now changed it looks a little bit different okay so I can do that with the various dimensions it's very very helpful especially if you have um, a difference in the dimension let's say for instance you've got a scale 1 is to 10 and you're wanting to make the scale the dimension scale uh, 1 is to 10 and you've utilized the scale 1 is to 1 with your dimensions you can then bring it uh, bring the dimensions uh, the correct dimensions in by just selecting the drawing and then going in the way that I've just shown you now doing exactly what I've done in order to give you the correct dimensions all right that will then conclude on the fourth lesson and I'm hoping that that has helped you in any way please comment below and make sure that you give me some questions I will then pick it up, that up the various questions that um, you wanting to ask and yeah I hope this has helped you